BTEC Applied Science, I'm going to do a Unit 1 Biology paper, which is June 2017. So hopefully that won't clash with any mock exams or anything your teacher will give you. So Unit 1 Biology paper. Uh, write neatly in black pen. Bring a couple of pens, a couple of black pens. Um, write neatly. If they can't read it, you won't get any marks. Uh, bring a ruler. You might need one. Bring your own calculator, the one that you've been bringing to all the lessons, the one that you know where all the buttons are. You're not going to waste loads of time figuring out how to use it. Bring your own calculator. You will need it. Uh, look how many marks there are for the question. If it's one mark, quick answer, just looking for a fact, bit of information. If there's three, four, six marks, you need to say a lot more. Uh, if you haven't got a clue, uh, you leave that question and you come back to it at the end and you write something down. OK, but don't get bogged down and don't waffle. Don't write loads of rubbish. Write something relevant. You know, if you get stuck, if you haven't got a clue, leave that question. Come back to it later. If you know your stuff, if you've revised, 30 minutes should be plenty of time. OK, uh, but you don't have time to relax. You need to get your skates on. Yeah, but don't panic. 30 minutes should be enough. Uh, this is basically what it says on the front of the paper. Um, they used to have the biology and chemistry and physics all together uh, in one 90 minute paper. Now they do three separate 30 minute papers. Uh, but it, everything else is the same, okay? Um, you should have time to read the front of the paper before they actually start the exam. It's basically um, what I've just said. Anyway, let's dive in. Here we go. Uh, the electron micrograph shows the ultrastructure of an animal cell. So this is an animal cell, uh, which is a lysosome. Now, it's not immediately obvious actually i mean one thing i can do is just by elimination c is obviously the nucleus um b is the membrane it's pointing at the outside um now looking at a and d uh, i reckon a is probably a mitochondria yeah uh, um and d is that means d is the lysosome so i reckon that the answer is d that's your lysosome. Two functions of lysosomes. Uh, well, you should remember they're like the garbage collectors. They collect up the rubbish and they digest it. So two functions. I'm going to say that they digest foreign particles, uh, for example, pathogens, viruses, bacteria, uh, a bit like white blood cells. So they collect up this stuff that shouldn't be there and they digest it. And they digest uh, waste products like worn out bits of cells that have had their day. And so there you go. So they digest foreign particles and they break down waste products. Uh, and they're your rubbish collectors, your lysosomes. Uh, ooh, magnification. Now, you know, I, I know a lot of students find this a little bit tricky. Uh, the tricky thing about it is the micrometers there uh, and you've got centimeters there and basically you told the actual diameter and you've told the observed diameter and you need to calculate the magnification so this is how i would do it i am i am sure this is the best way uh, we are working out the magnification. So the magnification, if you put your finger over that, is the image size divided by the actual size. The image size, it says it's 1.8 centimeters. So on my calculator, 1.8 times 10 to the minus 2. Uh, if I do 0 0.018, then, you know, how on earth are you going to do that with micrometers? You know, divide by a million but I just do 1.8 times 10 to the minus 2 centimeters is 10 to the minus 2 divided by 45 times 10 to the minus 6 
because micro is 10 to the minus 6. It's a millionth micro. And the answer is 400. If you can't do that, you just all my advice is just practice. OK, there'll always be a question using this. You need to practice. Get used to your centimeters and your micrometers and your millimeters. OK, uh, what is meant by the word tissue? Well, tissue is uh, a group of the same type of specialized cells carrying out the same function. So basically, lots of the same type of cell together doing the same job. For example, muscle tissue is made up of muscle cells. Yeah. Next, now, Parkinson's disease. Uh, there's quite a bit of reading here, OK, uh, but it's got to be done. Parkinson's disease affects the nervous system, can be genetic disorder. The diagram shows a neuron releasing neurotransmitter uh, in a healthy person and a neuron releasing neurotransmitter in a person with Parkinson's disease. So this is the healthy one. And if you look, there's loads of loads of neurotransmitter there. Uh, this is the person with Parkinson's disease. Uh, there's, there's not very much neurotransmitter. There's a lot less neurotransmitter. OK, um, some people with Parkinson's disease are given L-DOPA. Oh, hang on. We missed this bit out. Complete the missing label Z. Now, Z is pointing at the neurotransmitter. And we know that we know because we're revised that the problem with Parkinson's disease is that you're not producing enough dopamine. So the answer is dopamine. The neurotransmitter problem in Parkinson's disease is this dopamine. Now, some people with Parkinson's disease are given L-DOPA to control their, uh, their symptoms. By the way, if you've got a highlighter, when you're doing the exam, you could do what I'm doing, you know, underline keywords and things, yeah? Explain how L-DOPA affects the synaptic transmission in a, per uh, in a person with Parkinson's disease. So basically, what does L-DOPA do? And we know this, we've revised it, we know that dopamine cannot be absorbed into the bloodstream. Uh, however, the molecule that makes dopamine, which is called L-DOPA, can. Uh, injecting patients with L-DOPA increases dopamine levels to normal so in the presynaptic neuron. So this is the presynaptic neuron here. And so signals can pass normally across the synaptic cleft. Yeah, this is straight out of the textbook. Learn it. Just say it. If you know that, easy marks. There's a, a film called Awakenings with uh, Robin Williams and Robert De Niro, which is very good, by the way. It's about L-DOPA and how they discovered this. Uh, some bacteria can cause infection in humans. Microbiologists can use different techniques. Uh, gram positive, gram negative. Yes, we know this. We've done this. Uh, complete the table. Uh, to find out if bacteria are gram positive or negative. So the name of the technique uh, and the results for positive and negative. So it's called gram staining. You do a gram stain. Uh, and I remember purple and pink. So gram positive, it goes purple. Uh, and gram negative, it's a much lighter pink color. Purple and pink. There are other things you could say there, but remember that purple and pink. Uh, penicillin is a type of antibiotic. Penicillin is used to treat gram positive bacterial infections. Uh, e. coli is a type of gram negative bacteria. Uh, explain how the structure of E. coli prevents penicillin be being an effective treatment. So why doesn't penicillin work on gram negative bacteria? Uh, and the answer is we have learned because gram negative bacteria have an outer wall. Yeah, gram negative bacteria have an outer membrane outside the cell wall. Uh, and this outer membrane uh, is why it's gram negative, because the, the stain doesn't get to the cell wall. OK, uh, and this outer wall will stop 
uh, penicillin from entering the cell uh, and basically breaking down the cell wall so that you kill the cell okay so gram negative bacteria have an outer membrane outside the cell wall uh, and this is why it doesn't become stayed and the outer wall prevents the uh, penicillin the antibiotic from getting into the cell and basically killing it uh, alveolar tissue is in the lungs and the alveolar tissue that's the that's the big balloons isn't it well they're not big there's millions and millions of little balloons alveolar tissue is found in the lungs uh, endothelial tissue is found in the blood vessels uh, state the type of epithelial tissue found in both alveolar and endothelial tissue well there's two types of epithelial tissue isn't there there's columnar and there's squamous and the squamous is the squashed yeah columnar is columns squamous is the squashed one the thin ones and so in your uh, alveoli and your blood vessels you get your squamous yeah the the thin flat ones squamous uh, state the function of the endothelial tissue in an artery well it lines the inner surface of the artery yeah the tissue lines the walls of the artery and it forms a thin smooth surface so that blood can flow easily so you've got a nice smooth surface and it's thin so it doesn't make the the uh, artery any smaller or very very little and the blood flows with very little friction through the blood vessel uh, now the next question four marks so we need to say quite a bit uh, describe how a buildup of cholesterol in an artery uh, in the artery walls is a risk factor in the development of atherosclerosis okay so atherosclerosis we know is when the arteries become uh, blocked and basically how does cholesterol a buildup of cholesterol uh, lead to atherosclerosis we have learnt this it's in the textbook it was on one of your flashcards step by step we have learned the endothelial layer is damaged for example by high blood pressure or smoking yeah the chemicals in cigarette smoke uh, LDL cholesterol which is uh, low density lipoproteins by the way LDL cholesterol accumulates at the damaged site uh, white blood cells move in uh, and you start getting a bit of a clot forming there and it all forms a hardened substance called plaque uh, which narrows the artery okay you, you might even want to do a little sketch so that's the artery there uh, and there's the the walls of the artery and then you start getting your yeah and then you get this is your plaque here okay and that leads to atherosclerosis I reckon I've said enough for four marks there a palisade mesophyll cell is a specialized plant cell in the leaf okay so this is inside a leaf and we've got the the mesophyll is from here to here that's your mesophyll and you've got your palisade layer which is these cells here and then you've got this spongy layer here and you've got some epidermis above and below that uh, identify two organelles in a palisade mesophyll cell that help to maintain its rigid structure and we know this this is year nine this is the uh, cell wall and the vacuole the cell wall and the vacuole uh, and that's this is keeps it in shape it maintains the shape of the leaf okay and this is the six mark question this one here explain how the structure of the palisade mesophyll cells is specialized to support the process of photosynthesis so let's figure out how we're going to get six marks okay 
So basically what we're going to do is we're going to talk about the structure. So things about the structure of these cells here that help them to do photosynthesis. So what things about the structure of these cells help them to do photosynthesis? Yeah. Now, there are things that you could say which are obvious, as we shall see. You say what the structure is, you say how it helps photosynthesis. And if you say three of them, and they are, you explain it really well, you say what the structure is, you explain why it helps photosynthesis well, and it's a good, well-written little essay, which is nice and easy to read and understand, you should get six marks. Uh, on the mark scheme, there'll be a lot more than that because there'll be other alternatives that you could say, okay? And there'll be some that I haven't got a clue about because I'm a physicist, not a biologist, the confession there, okay? And there'll be stuff that you could say which isn't on the mark scheme. And as long as it's good biology stuff that you've read in a book or on the internet or whatever, that should get marks as well. So what we're looking for is at least three, four to be safe, things that we can say, structure, why it helps photosynthesis. Here's my answer. So the first one is the obvious one. Palisade cells contain lots of chloroplasts. And chloroplasts contain chlorophyll, uh, which is needed for photosynthesis. This is how the plant gets the energy that it needs. So that's a couple of marks there. Lots of chloroplasts and why. Next, uh, being cylindrical and tight, tightly packed, uh, this is the palisade layer, the palisade cells. They have a large surface area, so they collect lots of sunlight energy. Uh, and also, uh, being cylindrical and tightly packed, it helps to maintain the shape of the leaf so you imagine a leaf and the upper surface is collecting light. So if you're keeping that shape, then that helps photosynthesis as well, maximizes light collection. Uh, the products of photosynthesis can diffuse easily through the membranes. Okay. Um, and we're talking about these mesophyll cells as well. So I'll put in uh, gaps in the lower S, uh, epidermis and they're called stomata. Uh, allow carbon dioxide to enter the leaf uh, into the spongy layer and we've got these air pockets in the spongy layer okay and so gas exchange can take place in these air pockets Gap, gaps in the lower epidermis called stomata allow carbon dioxide to enter the leaf into air pockets in the spongy layer so gas exchange can take place the carbon dioxide needed for photosynthesis I reckon that's six marks worth. Your answer might be quite different. The only one I imagine must be there really is that one there. That is the most obvious one.